let the joy of the Lord shine on your face. And turn to somebody and say, I am so glad to worship with you today. I am so glad to worship with you today.
see. So if you can walk, talk, and see, you're doing better than a lot of people. You should be very, very, very blessed that you are here today. Are there any uh, newcomers to Wings Chapel today?
some real soft drawings got something to say. <laughs> It's funny, it's uh, sometimes you pour so much out of yourself that you need to pour it back into as well. And um, thank you, Sister Sorrell and uh, Brother Bowens. I uh, the music really ministered to me today. Sometimes you know you're, you're scheduled to give a word, but you have to tell preachers all the time. Sometimes you get a preacher and you're reserved. Sometimes, you know, you're uneasy, you've got to preach on fumes. And uh, that, that was me this afternoon. That was me this afternoon. Um, but then as she was saying, you know, his eye is on the sparrow, so I know he watches me. And one thing I've learned about God is when you preach his word, it's funny because he's going to allow you to go through something. You've got to live what you just said. You now got to practice what you just preached. And I remember, you know, last Sunday I was basically talking about, you know, God has got your back, no matter what. And um, it's funny, though, because then the devil will bring you situations and trials and things that will make you think that he doesn't. And you got to transform your mind into thinking, okay, what word am I going to believe now? Am I going to believe God's word and have faith in that? Or am I going to believe Satan's word and have faith in his word? That's why I love the scriptures says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Because sometimes if you can't do it yourself, you have your brothers and sisters that can grab you by the hand and pick you up to help you get to where you need to be. And that music this afternoon was that, that bridge to help me get to where I needed to go. Amen. It was funny because when I was eating lunch, the defect, my commander came up to me and I guess he saw it over my face. He's like, sorry about it, you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm okay. He's like, you sure? And he's like, well, stay encouraged, you know, keep your chin up, and that type of stuff like that. And it's like, Lord, I didn't even say nothing to him. How does he know? And uh, it's just like the, God has a way of knowing exactly where you are. And then he also has a way of picking you up from where you are to help you get to where you need to be. And uh, so I say this to say, thank you so much. Because I don't know what that song did to y'all, but today, I mean, I couldn't, pre I couldn't talk right away. I, I just had to, like, I had to worship God. Really had to worship God, and uh, I, just, I thank you for that. And, and that's why it's so vitally important that we come. We don't just take the time for granted and say, "Well, hey, I'm just here to punch my time clock, and I went to church today." No, I'm here one to worship my God, but I'm here because I need to hear from God. I need to get like the, the brother was talking about yes uh, last Sunday. We need to get a word from God. So when we're going through those times, we can have something to stand that help us get to where we're going. Amen. Amen. So. Praise God with all our heads bowed. Praise God. And then we're going to run into the word real quick and then we're going to be gone. Heavenly Father, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we just adore you today. God, we adore you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we, we empty ourselves out right now. God, to say, God, we are just here for you. God, have your way in this place, oh God. Remove yokes, oh God. Remove burdens, oh God. May unsaved people become saved. May backsliders come back to you, O oh God. We pray, dear God, for wholeness and health, dear God, and healing right now. Every aspect of our lives, emotional healing, physical healing, mental healing, God. Have your way, O oh God, in us, dear God, right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that a word will become flesh in this place, O oh God, and that you will have your way, O oh Lord. Take the dead clothes off of us, O oh God. Make us not only alive, but your God, make me free, free in Jesus' name. Where the sun sets free is free indeed. Have your way, O oh God, in this place, your God, today. And we sure got to give you the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. We're turning to Book of Luke. Praise God, chapter 1. Praise God, you have something prepared and the Holy Spirit just takes it totally different way. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 37. We have it signified by saying amen. Amen. And it says this. And in the sixth month, the angel, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. 
And the angel came into unto her and said, Hail, thou, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee, blessed thou among women. And when he, she saw him, she was troubled in his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give him unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, the cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and in the sixth month, with her who was barren. For with God, say this with me, for with God, with God nothing, nothing shall be impossible. Be For with God, nothing shall be impossible. My text, and the Word became flesh. Amen? Amen. And the Word became flesh. Y'all may take your seats. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise God. One thing the Lord's been dealing with me here lately is, you know, the last couple weeks, I don't know if you were here last Sunday, but if you were, you really missed a treat in, praise God, in the way that the Holy Spirit works. I'll give you a quite example. Last Sunday, remember we were talking about the gift of God, and receiving Christ, and receiving Jesus, basically got into your heart, receiving the Son of God, receiving the gift of God. And then all of a sudden, during the altar call, the Holy Spirit did a shift. I don't know if you all noticed that, but we went from being talking about the gift of God to now that we receive salvation, we receive the Son of God, we receive Christ into our heart, now the Holy Spirit was saying, yeah, they're saved, but they still got problems. Now they're saved, but they still got issues. Now they're saved, and they still might have some drama in their life. So we went from talking about the gift of God, to all of a sudden now God's like, lay hands on people. Now we can pray and touch and agree with some people so they can be free before they leave. Yeah. See, reminding me of the story of Lazarus. Remember when Jesus said, when he was, Lazarus was dead for four days? And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And we know that Lazarus came back to life, and therefore he came forth. But however, when he came forth, he still had dead clothes wrapped all around him. So therefore, he was alive, he was saved, if you will, he was brought back to life, he became spiritually alive in the spiritual context, he got what he needed, however, even though he was made alive, he still wasn't free. Because what happened was, he was still wrapped in all this deadness, he was still wrapped in all these dead clothes, he was still wrapped in all these dead things that was still keeping him bound, amen? amen. So what's happening is, sometimes we can be saved, but we still have this stuff around us, our mental things, the stuff on our job, and this and that circumstances come up around us and we might have some dead things still attached to us, therefore we still might not be free. Amen? Amen. So praise God. So today we're going to talk about real quick how in the world then do we get free. Amen? But one of the reasons we do that, first of all, if we have a need, this is what we do. The first situation is there has to be a need. Amen? Now it says this, Mark 11, 24 and 25. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when ye pray, Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you shall stand praying, forgive, and it shall be ought against any, for that your Father which also is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. It also says this, but in James chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think they should receive anything from the Lord. What's that saying? Saints, when we, got to, when we go to God in prayer, first of all, we have to know the Bible says in Hebrews 4, 16, we should boldly go before the throne of grace. Amen? Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says the veil was rent in two. That means I can go to God all by myself. Amen? And I have confidence knowing when God, when I pray to God, God hears and answers my prayers. Amen? Amen. So if I'm not around, or chapel's not around, or the minister's not around, Ultimately, praise God, it really doesn't matter because I know when I go to God, I can get a prayer through too. Amen? Amen. So when I go to the chaplain or I go to myself, I say, look, I just want somebody to touch and agree with me in something that I've already been saying. Amen? I'm just getting with somebody that's already going to touch and agree with somebody I've already been speaking. See, we got to know when we go to God, we shall have, according to His will, whatever we desire or we petition. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So how do we do that? One of the ways in which we do that, praise God, is when we get a word from God, first of all, the first thing you got to do is you got to get a word from God. Meaning, when you're going through something, amen, say, say, say if you need healing in your body. 
What you need to do is you need to get a word of God that pertains to your situation. Get all the word of God that pertains to her healing, and then you pray, and then you speak, and you declare that praise God over your life. So whatever your situation is this morning, whether it be finances or your marriage or your children or your this or your that or your job, get some time in God's word. Get a word from God and then you speak and then you pray and then you bring that into existence, praise God, in your life. Amen? But here's the thing. Be all with me so far? Amen. But praise God. Here's the thing, though. You can't speak or you can't pray what you don't know. Right. Amen? So in order to speak the word of God into existence, you've got to know the word of God for yourself. Amen? That's why the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a word when he's not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? Right. So it's just like in the military. The more ammunition you have, the more damage you can do to the enemy. Amen? Well, the more word of God we have ins inside of us, the more we damage we can do to our problems, the more damage we can do to our issues. The more damage we can do to our situations so we can become free. Amen? Amen? So the more arsenal we have to our spiritual arsenal, the more dead clothes we can get off of so we can be free. Amen? And then what we do is we continue to speak the word of God regarding our situation. Amen? Another way of doing it, is, another way of getting free, if you will, is sowing a seed. Now, I'm not talking about just giving money. That's not what I'm talking about, sowing a seed. If I know I have a problem in a situation, praise God, I sow in that area. Meaning, I'll just keep using the healing vein. If I know that I, I'm in need of a healing, not only do I speak the word of God that pertains to healing, but I help somebody else who's sick go get well. You see what I'm saying? So if I, if I see somebody else that's in need of that, I go to that very need in which they have a need, and I sow and seed in the very area that I have a need. You understand that? Because that way what I'm doing is the Bible says in Genesis 8.22 that seed time and harvest time. As long as the earth remains, there's going to be a harvest. God promised that to Noah after the flood and after the rainbow and everything came. Amen? So as long as there's a seed, there's going to be a return on the seed that was sown. Amen? So if I have a need in a particular area, not only do I speak the word of God over the situation, I pray the word of God over the situation, but then I study the word of God so I have a word of God for the situation, but also what I do is I sow a seed Praise God in the area, amen, that I have a need, amen? Does that make sense, everybody? Amen. So praise God. Now, here's some lessons to live by. There are no impossibilities in God, but we must be willing to believe He is able to do what we were believing Him to do. Here's another thing. If we can believe it, we can receive it, amen? Mark 9, 23 says this. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believes, amen? Faith believes God's word without any sense, realm, evidence. And then walks away like it's already done. Remember when Jesus cursed the fig tree? Remember when Jesus basically paraphrased and wanted something to eat? And he went to the figs, the fig tree and it wasn't time for figs, so he went to get some figs and there was no figs there. And he cursed the tree. But the Bible doesn't say that, that the tree died right away. The Bible says Jesus just kept right on walking, did his daily journey. The Bible says, and then the next day they came back, and then the tree was dead. Amen? So the tree didn't die right away. It was a process. It didn't like it died like three seconds later. But Jesus, the Bible never says where Jesus walked off and then kept looking back to see if what he said was going to happen. Amen? No, he spoke it and then he sucked it up and kept driving off. But the disciples came back and said, Lord, Lord, what, you know, what's up with the fig tree that you cursed? Oh, it's seen that it's dead. And Jesus is like, why do you marvel at this? Amen? When Jesus spoke it, he expected it to happen, whether it happened it right away or not. Amen? See, that's what faith does. And when I get a word from God, and I know that word of God pertains to my situation, once I speak that thing, praise God, it doesn't really matter if it happens right away, because ultimately by faith, I know what's going to happen. Right. So regardless of whether you see it or not, I keep speaking that thing, I keep believing that thing, I keep walking in that thing, and I know what's going to happen. The tree might not die today, but it really doesn't matter. Eventually, tomorrow, whatever, it's going to happen, because I'm speaking the word of God into existence. Amen? So praise God. It's so another thing we talked about many times before. Don't let what you see change what you say. If it doesn't happen right away, praise God. As long as God has given you a word on that situation, as long as you know you've heard from God in that situation, it doesn't really matter what you see because you know what's going to happen. Amen? Amen. So praise God. So praise God. But here's the challenge. Amen? See, I'm reminded. See, the same thing happened to my father in the faith. Amen? They were trying to have a baby with his wife for... Years, amen? And it couldn't happen, it couldn't happen. Apparently in a previous relationship she had a miscarriage and stuff. So praise God, they were trying to have a baby and all of a sudden God gave my father in faith the word said, you're going to call his name Joshua, you're going to have a son and the whole thing. So he kept, he kept praying it, kept praying it, kept praying it, amen? But 
this is what happened. While he was in TDY in Florida, his first trip with the city where he knows he's going to pastor, while he was there, his wife had a miscarriage. Amen? And during that time, the enemy came and flooded him with all kinds of stuff like, you did not hear from God. You must have missed some blessing blockers in your life. You know, your, your wife will never have a baby. This is her second marriage. She, she can't have children, etc. Amen? But this is what he had to do. The Bible says this. He had to take control of his thought life. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And we're going to talk about what these strongholds are. Casting down imaginations. So the strongholds are these mental thoughts that we have. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Right. Amen. So if I'm thinking something, praise God, that doesn't line up with what God told me, that thought's got to be kicked to the curb. Come on. Amen. Come on. When things come in my head that don't line up with God's word, I've got to rebuke that thing and i got to move on. So here's the thing, bad thoughts are going to come in our head regardless. We can't stop from coming. However, what makes it a sin or not is what we do according to the thoughts that we get. Amen? The dirty thoughts come in your head, praise God. However, what we do with them is what makes them good or bad. Amen? So when that thought comes in there, I don't got to entertain it, praise God. I don't have to receive that thing. If God gave me a word of that thing, praise God, I can still continue to speak that thing. Amen? And this is why it is so important that we, that we focus, to, you know, praise God, and godly images and godly words, and we, we fill our spirit, if you will, with the word of God. Amen? Why? Because the Bible says, cast down vain imaginations. Or another way of saying it, cast down vain images. I want you all to close your eyes for a second. Now, if I say right now, whatever you do, do not think of a pink elephant. <laughs> whatever you do, do not think of a pink elephant. Matter of fact, we're going to go a little further. Whatever you do right now, do not think of a blue elephant. Praise that, open up your eyes. See, as soon as I say that, immediately your brain formed a picture in your mental capacity of what that thing looked like. Amen? Well, praise God. Your soul is the same way. Whatever you put in there, your mind is going to put an image towards it, and that is what you're going to be going to because of the image that you know allowed to go inside of you. Amen? That's why it's so vitally important that we surround ourselves with like, people with like faith, people that speak the Word of God into our lives, People that know the word of God in our lives. And we get the things of God and the images of God in our mind. So when the trials do come, that's the thing that we focus on and not our problem. Amen? We talked about this last Sunday. We need to start speaking to our circumstances about our God instead of telling our God about our circumstances. Amen? Because our God is so much bigger, praise God, than what we're going through. Amen? Now, praise God. But however, amen, praise God, even in the midst of all that, you still might have some trials and tribulations, amen, if you will, that you need help on. Like I was saying this morning, I needed y'all this morning. Believe it or not, y'all encouraged me this morning, or this afternoon. That song, those, it's just, you all being here encouraged me, amen? amen? Well, guess what? If we go back and read it, go back to Luke 1, chapter 26, verse 26, and keep going down, the Bible says that, that Mary went to visit Elizabeth, amen? And at this time, Elizabeth was six months pregnant with John the Baptist, amen? And the Bible says that when Mary got there, John the Baptist leaped up in Elizabeth's womb, amen, when he knew that Jesus was coming, amen? What is my point? We have to get with people, praise God, that have the same life faith as we do. We've got to begin with people that's going to help us get to where we're going, amen? See, people in your life are either going to be a help to you, or they're either going to be a hindrance to you, amen? They're either going to help you get to where you're going, or they're going to be a leech. They're going to suck the life out of you, Amen? My thing I want to do is get with people that are of like faith. Basically what happens is when I get with, with you, something on the inside jumps on the inside of me. When I'm around you, something on the inside of me gets stirred up like Elizabeth with John the Baptist. Something starts kicking on the inside of me when I get in your presence. Amen? There's something in me that you're pulling out of me. There's something in me that you're trying to get out of me that's going to help me go to another level. Amen? Amen. So we have to get with people that have like faith. Amen? What's the point here? Now, Mary also faced challenges. In the midst of all this, she faced challenges as well, amen? First of all, she still had a husband to deal with, and God took care of that. How do we know that? Because there's a whole, there's a whole rumor going around that, you know, she was you know, out there sleeping around, and that's how she got pregnant the whole thing. And Joseph, this was new to Joseph, I mean, who ever heard of a virgin birth? 
Amen? So this is all new to him, too. So he was stripping like, okay, God, you know, should I put it away? Should I divorce her? What the heck do I do? So then what did God do? He had to go to Joseph and say, hey, Joseph, you know, stop tripping. It's all good. But, you know, the baby that's inside her is coming from me. You know, she didn't go out there and do the wrong thing. So therefore, she, everything she's telling is the truth. So go ahead and take her and go ahead and marry her anyway. Because he's like, I got this. Amen? So, but Mary still had to think of that. She also had to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem, so 25 miles, but she was almost due. Then they had the room at the end when they got there. They had to have the baby in a manger, and as soon as they had the baby, they found out they had to escape to Egypt because King Herod wanted to kill Jesus. So guess what? In spite of all this stuff, in spite of the promise, listen, Mary, you're still going to have some obstacles along the way as well. Just because you get a promise from God doesn't exonerate you from going through stuff. Amen? Amen? So even though she got the promise from God, but guess what? The devil going to do his job too. Come on. And this thing called life 101 happens, and even though you got a word from God, and you got a promise from God, just be, there's, a, see, there, there's a thing be, between the promise of God and the performance of God. There's a lapse there where you get a word from God, and the time it actually happens, amen? Well, in between that time there, I like to call it the preparation. What we do is we prepare that for that thing to happen. What we do is we mature and we nurture just like Mary nurtured the child Jesus that was in her. We do the same thing with the word of God that God impregnates us with. When God gives us a word, praise God, we nurture that thing, we feed that thing, we grow that thing so it becomes flesh in our life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So here's some other lessons to live by. If you can believe the impossible, you can receive the invisible. There are no impossibilities to them that believe. Amen? See every situation in the spirit. God is the spirit. It does not have to make sense. He is spiritual, not sensual. What does that mean? God is not led by his emotions. Amen? He's led by himself. He's his spirit. Now, I reminded, remember the three Hebrew boys in the whole, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they're thrown in the fiery furnace and that whole thing? Well, before they got thrown in the fiery furnace, before, I think it was King Nebuchadnezzar, he, you know, turned it seven times hotter than what it was and all that stuff. I love what the men said before it happened. They paraphrasing, they said this. They said, look, king, whether or not my God delivers us or not, I don't know if he's going to do it or not. But he said, look, king, if he wants to, he can. Y'all catch that? They said, look, we don't know what God's going to do, but if he wants to deliver us, in spite of your decree, king, my God is more powerful than your decree, and if my God wants to, he can. What is my point? Before they actually got their breakthrough in the furnace, they, they had already received it by faith before they ever got there. They had already received their breakthrough in the spirit before they ever got it in the natural, in the fire. Amen? Amen? So before you ever get your breakthrough in the natural, you first have to receive it in the spirit. Amen? That's why the Bible says, he who comes to God must first believe that he is, and that God is a rewarder to those, praise God, who diligently seek him. Amen? So when we diligently seek God, we have to believe that he's a rewarder to us who seek him. Amen? God does hear and answer your prayer. Here's another thing you got to do. You don't have to have all the answers in order to operate in faith. Mary didn't know what was going to happen to her, but she kept on overcoming what she said. She said, be it unto me. Look, I've never been pregnant by, you know, by God before. How am I supposed to work this thing? <laughs> Amen? This is a new thing in the history of mankind. But she said, be it unto me. Amen. Basically, be it unto me. I don't know what's going to happen. And think about it. You're pregnant with God. How in the world does that work? <laughs> Amen? And secondly, now that you're pregnant with God, you know the devil's out there doing his business. You know people are going to be coming after you. So how in the world does that work? So guess what? But she, all, all, all in all, she said, be it unto me. Amen? So it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make sense to you. But praise God, it makes sense to God. As long as he's in charge, he will get your back. Amen? Come on. Here's another thing. Point number nine about casting down vain imaginations. It is possible... To take control of your thought life. We can master our mind. Amen? That's why the Bible says in Romans 12 and 1, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? So basically, how do we do that? By getting in the Word of God. Again, the more Word of God we have in us, the more we can transform the way we think. Amen? Because as long as we keep thinking like the world, we're going to keep doing like the world does, therefore we're going to keep having what the world has. Amen? But again, like we talked about a couple, a couple weeks ago, if I want something different, i got to be willing to change what I'm doing. Because if I keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting something different, then that's insanity. Amen? So if I want something different, i got to be willing to do something different. Amen? As well? Amen? All right. All right. 
To face your faith challenge, you must surround yourself with people of like precious faith. Amen? Let me talk about this. Mary went to Elizabeth's house and listened to the word constantly, being careful not to speak to anyone about her situation that was not of like faith. See, that's it. When you get a word from God, sometimes people will try to talk you out of what God just said. Amen? So we got to make sure that we get around people that are speaking the same thing we are, as long as it's lining up with God's Word. Amen? Again, just because you hear it doesn't mean you have to entertain or receive everything that you hear. Amen? Amen. Try. Amen. Here's another thing. When Mary went to Elizabeth, John the Baptist sleeping up in Elizabeth's womb was another way of doing this. The Lord will use others to give you confirmation that you are on the right path. Amen? That's the best thing I can do. Because that's one of the reasons why we need each other. Because the Bible basically says this, uh, chapter, I forget what it is, I'm paraphrasing this. It says basically there, there's no scripture that is left to private interpretation. Another way of saying it, there's no such thing as a lone wolf McQuaid, if you will, in the body of Christ. Anytime God does something, he's going to some kind of way bring confirmation in, in the body of Christ to make sure that what you're doing is legit. Amen? Amen. So here's another thing. Being a Christian does not mean that we do not face challenges. But John 16, 30, 33 and Amplified says this. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration, but be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident. Be certain. Be undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it to power and harm and have conquered it for you. Jesus Christ, that's why Paul says, Oh great, where has thy sting? Oh death, where is thy victory? Another way of saying, look, I don't care what you want to do to me, devil. All in all, I got the victory in this situation, amen? Through Jesus Christ, not only are we going to win, we've already won, amen? All we got to keep doing is living the life. The battle is already fixed. The battle is already won. We've already won. All we got to do is keep on keeping on to get to the other side of the crew, amen? Amen. Praise God. I like what Timothy, I mean, uh, Paul says this in 1 Timothy 6, 12. He says, keep on fighting the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Hereunto that are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. So keep on keeping on. Amen. So point, point right here. Be determined. Praise God. Be determined. Here we go right here. And Luke, if you keep reading down Luke chapter 1. Verse 57 through 64. Be resolved to remain faithful in God in everything concerning Joshua, even this first middle name. That's what the back is talking about, my father in the faith. Again, when all these challenges came, amen, and all these thought lives came in, he still had to be determined that God said, okay, his name is Joshua, and you're gonna, your wife's going to conceive a son. So he still had to keep speaking that thing, regardless of what it looks like, amen. He had to have resolve. He had to have determination, knowing what God said. Now, if we go back to Luke, Praise God, chapter 1, 57 through 64, it reads this. When Elizabeth's son was born, her neighbors and relatives heard how kind the Lord had been to her, and they too were glad. Eight days later, they, they did for the child that was the law of Moses' command. They were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But Elizabeth said, no, his name is John. The people argued, no one in your family has ever been named John. So they motioned to Zechariah to find out what they wanted to name his son. Zechariah asked for a writing tablet. Then he wrote, his name is John. Everyone was amazed. Right away, right after that, Zechariah started speaking and praising God. If you go back and look at what happened when God told Zechariah his son to be called John, it was so serious that Zechariah, God wanted to make sure that the word didn't get out, that basically Zechariah was basically mute until the child was born. Amen? So basically, though, once John, once Zechariah got it, once he wrote it down and said, look, in spite of what you're all trying to say, we're going to call him John anyway, because that's the word I got from God. And it also shows, too, that his wife was also in agreement with the same thing he was saying, because she said, no, his name is John as well. So regardless of what you all trying to say, since God said this, this is what we're going to go with. Amen? Amen. And as soon as they went with that, Zechariah's mouth was open, he was able to speak again. Amen? Now, here's the last point right here. Faith in action. Amen? We need to put our faith in action. Amen? So even if we have faith. There's some things that we got to do because we have the faith that we say we have. Amen? Because all know we can theorize, analyze, strategize, and hypothesize all day long. But there will come a time when you have to do something about what you are believing God for. Amen? Amen. The Bible says this in James chapter 2, 14 and 18. Faith without works 
is dead. Amen? Dear friends, do we think we'll get anywhere in this if we learn all the right words but never do anything? Does merely talking about faith indicate that a person really has it? For instance, if we come upon an old friend dressed in rags and half-starved and say, Good morning, friend. Be clothed in Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And walk off without providing such as a coat or a cup of soup. Where does that get you? Isn't it obvious that God talk without God acts is outrageous nonsense? I can hear so many people saying right now, sounds good. You take care of the faith department, elder, and I'll take care of the works department. Not so fast. You can, you can, you can no more show me your works apart from your faith than I can show you my faith apart from my works. Faith and works, works and faith. It fits hand and glove. Amen? Amen. So here, we talked about this last Sunday. You know, remember we talked about basically, if you say, love is an action word. Amen? Y'all remember that? So if you say you love me, there should be some loving actions that accompany the words that are coming out of your mouth. Amen? Right. Remember the Lord's mouth that your actions can't cap? Amen? What's happening is if you say you love me, the love is an action word. There should be some actions that accompany the words that are coming out of your mouth. Amen? So if we have faith in God, consequently, there should be actions that we'd be doing because of the faith that we have. Amen? Praise God. I'm, I'm closing with this. Let's just live by right here. Here's some more. Never put a no where God has already put a yes. Amen? If God says yes, praise God, that's what you go with. Amen? Come on. Your biblical confession is you simply agreeing with God's opinion of your situation. Amen? So what, that's why we, we keep doing that confession. Remember when uh, the sister gets up, hey, y'all, turn it back to your programs. We're going to do the confession of faith. What that is is God's confession over your situation. We speak life and not death. We speak life into our job. We speak life into our finances. We speak life into our home. We speak what God is saying into our situation, not what the world is saying into our situation. Amen? Here we go another one. Line your words up with God's word. Whatever God said regarding the situation, that's what you go with. Amen? And here we go. You must learn the corner from speech to actions. We can talk about it forever, but there will come a time for actions. Faith is an expression or action of his confidence, not just words. Faith is confidence in what God has said. Fear is confidence in what Satan has said. Amen? Faith cancels fear, but unfortunately fear also cancels faith. So as long as we continue to have faith in God, praise God, we can get to the other side of the room. And know, know, know this. God has got your back always. Amen? He died for you that you might have life, life with him for eternity, but that you might have it more abundantly. You have the abundant life here on the earth. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We're standing. Just a real quick testimony, too. I forgot to mention this. I'm a father of the faith. They just, uh, his wife just gave birth to baby Joshua about two months ago. So in spite of the miscarriage, in spite of the stuff that the devil was trying to throw in his face, his face, he got a word, a word from God. Your wife will have a son, his name should be Joshua. And that's what he kept speaking. And in spite of the thoughts that came in his mind, that's what he kept speaking. And guess what? She got pregnant again. And guess what? Two months ago, they gave birth to baby Joshua. And he's a beautiful, beautiful boy. They got pictures on him on the website. It's off the chain. So as long as we continue to speak what God said, it doesn't matter what you may be going through this morning or this afternoon. God is bigger than that. And if you were like me today and you need a, a, a pick-me-up, that's one of the reasons we come together to pick each other up. Is that sometimes it's very hard to do this Christian thing living on an island. That's why that's, thank you, brother. Thank you. Hit the nail right in the head. I need you to survive. We need each other to survive. Amen? That's why we're here. To worship God, to praise God, thanking Him for this Christmas season. But in spite of the season, in spite of this, in spite of that, we are here for one another as well. Don't let the devil make you think that you're all alone in a cop spike. That is a lie from the pits of hell. God has strategically placed every single one of us here be a blessing to be encouragement for every single one of you here right now that might need something from the Lord. Amen. God has put us here. God has impregnated you with things to 
bless somebody else. Amen? We are blessed to be a blessing. If it's a smile, if it's a hug, if it's a handshake, if it's an encouragement, if it's a song, if it's the musicians, if it's whatever. Whatever you need this afternoon, God is here to supply that need. Amen? Praise God, real quick, would you join hands? Come up to the front.
try to do it my own way and I got to wait with the fold and God, I need to come back. If that's you this afternoon, would you raise your hand? Praise God, I see that hand. And if you're saved this morning, you're saying, Lord, I'm saved. Thank you, God, for that. But God, I, I just got, I need somebody to touch the with me. I need somebody to help me get free. I'm tired of dealing with this and God, I need freedom right now. I need somebody to touch me with me right now. If that's you, would you come up to the front, please? And whatever it may be, whatever it may be this afternoon, God is here to meet the need. Again, you can, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. One of the attributes of love is to meet the need. And the Bible says, for God is love. Therefore, our, our God is in the business of meeting your need. God, no glory to have his children broke, busted, and disgusted. Amen? He wants us whole. He wants us complete. We're in a position where there's nothing missing and nothing broken. Amen? That's the kind of God that we serve. Amen? Praise God. At this time, man, if nobody comes, please go back to your seat. Why, minister to this brother, praise God, we hold hands.
city, and I am blessed in the fields, and I am blessed going in, and I am blessed coming out. And whatsoever my hand touch, and he cries, shall prosper. My relationship with God is prosperous. Prosperous first in my growth in him, as he is in me. I am above all the drama around me, with God's strength. I am the head, and I'm not the tail. I am more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Sickness and disease are rebuked in the name of Jesus. The divorce, the death, crisis, gossip, lies shall not prosper. Satan, I serve you notice. You are powerless and useless and inoperative in my life. I speak life into my life. I speak life into my relationships. I speak life into my family. I speak life into my career. I speak life into my surroundings. And having done all I can do to stand, I stand on God's word, with the loins of truth, and with the breastplate of righteousness, with the feet shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace, with the shield of faith, with the helmet of salvation, and with the sword of the Spirit, the word of God. I decree it, I declare it, for I am a child of God.
and service for our country, loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength, and our neighbor as our very self. Now receive the benediction. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ rest upon you and keep you now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Greet one another in the Lord.